What's up guys and welcome back, my name is Splattercat and today we're playing Expeditions Conquistador once again. And where we had left off, and I always feel like a broken record, I know I bring this up, but I've got to really find a way to paraphrase where we were at. But in any case, we had found out right here in this little burned out shack, and this tent I guess, there's several stained tents and a number of burned out houses here. We had learned that Felipe Gutierrez had been... In a bit of trouble, so I apparently he didn't lead very well. That's the only conclusion I can come to. And his group split in half, and there were some rebels, and there were the loyalists, and they seemed to have destroyed one another. Now, other than that, we'd been more or less just wandering around the jungles and the plains of Mexico here, trying to see if we could find treasure. I've been informed that that crazy gate that we were looking at, the Gate of Furries or whatever it was, is El Dorado. And so I'm gonna go back there, we'll take care of it in due time. I'll probably figure the puzzle out on my own, unless you guys really want to see me just kind of fiddle with the puzzle. I mean, I can't imagine how that would be very entertaining, but if you want to see me mess with the puzzle, I guess I can do it on camera. And my guess is you probably get a ton of treasure from doing that. But in any case, let's take a look here and see what everybody's up to. And where is Barreto? Bring me Barreto! Where are you at, Barreto? There he is. Alright, so Barreto has found himself a few more materials. Let's make a couple spike traps because I feel like that would probably be useful for me And then I'm also wait Sanchez. No Sanchez. No. No wrong task. There we go Maybe I didn't select somebody. There we go. All right spike traps Excellent, and so during the course of the night we turn 15 or 16 herbs into medicine sixes fives They're all curvy with a little stick on them. It's difficult to tell sometimes kindergarten is hard my friends but we found another map the Mountains thing. Oh a little river interesting Okay, and it looks like we've got a town up here as well, so let's let's be careful We're gonna keep our sabers a rattling in this case unless we've actually made our way all the way back up to a settlement We've already seen what is this Papantla? That's right Papantla was the place That Ooh, Gutierrez's treasure hold on now. You got me. You got me interested. You have my attention, sir Well, I may consider going and fetching some treasure in just a bit but I forget what it was. What did he want me to do in Papantla? Let's see. Subjugate Papantla. Well, if they're going to war with the Totonac, I think the Totonac are the ones that we originally wanted to side with. So let's see if there's any way we can work this to our benefit here. If we can kind of cheat both parties at the same time, I think this would very much work out in our favor. So let's talk to somebody. You come upon a peaceful village resting in the shadow of a large mountain. The people there seem wary of your presence, but they seem to have a fondness for trinkets and precious objects, and they might be convinced to trade with you. Let's find the chieftain. The ruler of Papantla is a beautiful woman in her early 40s, clad in an unusually simple dress that drapes elegantly from her shoulders. She's introduced as Dear God. Xilazach! Which your interpreter translates as Caliandra, the name of a flower that grows in the south. Like, the O's have little hats. Even the I has a little hat on it. God. Welcome to Papantla, white one. That's impolite. Why have you come to our settlement? We wish to trade with you. We've had dealings with your kind before. They did not leave a good impression. If you wish to trade with my people, you must show them that you are different. I can see where this is going. Papantla is part of Totonacapan, and it belongs to the Totonac, yet the Aztec Empire controls us all against our will. If you want to gain our favor, you must strike against the Aztec oppressors. See? I knew we'd be able to wrangle something out of this. Do you have anything particular in mind? Tenochtitlan regularly sends patrols to collect their taxes and dues, and young men and women to be sacrificed upon the steps of their great temple. Track one of those patrols and kill the Aztec warriors. When the deed is done, then we will trade with you. Alright, we've already found and killed one of them. She raises her eyebrows with a smile. Our scouts did find evidence of such a battle. Did you take anything from those warriors upon defeating them? I'll show her the Trinky Dinks. Many of these things were taken from us as taxes. You may keep them as a token of my gratitude, white one, and you may trade with my people. What name shall we know you by? You may call me El Gato del Splatter. I don't know if white one is the one that I want to go with right there. I... The one in white. That would be preferable. If we could switch the whole thing around, like we could take the adjectives and the noun and we could just swap them. The one in white. Then it would be fantasy enough for me, but let's see here. Well, I guess we already took care of business there, so I guess we'll go over to this other hut. And it says, your company is moving down a busy street when you encounter a clearly European man dressed in black armor. The man was moving in the other direction, but he stops dead in his tracks when the crowd parts to reveal you. In the blink of an eye, Laszlo Paulik is at the front, weapon in hand, immaculately sharpened blade held barely an inch from the man's throat. Paulik says nothing, merely staring down his weapon into the old friend's startled eyes. Zaz stammers weakly. 
Laszlo, how did you find me? Laszlo's voice is calm, but it carries a cold edge. Lady Justice brought me here so that I might bring balance to her scales. Zaz sinks heavily. What are you going to do? A slight drop in Laszlo's tone lends considerable menace to his supply, or his supply, his reply. I will execute you as the deserter that you are. Laszlo cuts him off before he has time to utter his plea. I will not tolerate your excuses. It was a brutal battle. Is that what you were going to say? The brutality of the battle only made your flight a greater betrayal. Zaz's eyes widen. No. Again, Laszlo cuts him off. You thought you were going to die. Because of you, we lost people that might have otherwise lived. Our left flank fell within minutes. We were completely overrun, and Dialviano was killed. Frustrated, Zaz screams at the top of his lungs, spittle flying through the air. It made no difference. The fight was already lost, and you know it. If I hadn't run, that flank would have fallen anyways, and I would have fallen with it. It would just have been another senseless death, and with a swift and powerful thrust, Laszlo leads his weapon directly through Tomas's torso. The deserter sputters, spits out blood, gazing uncomprehendingly at the steel protruding from his chest. Laszlo leans closer, his voice is shaking slightly. We were friends, Tomas. Brothers in arms, and you betrayed me. Your reasons, they really don't matter. Laszlo retracts his sword for, with a cruel pull, and Zaz falls to the ground, staring at his old friend as the light fades from his eyes. Laszlo stands over the body, still as a statue. You lied to me. We were, uh, he said, oh, you lied. I lost my place. I can't read. Without moving, Laszlo replies, everything I told you was true. Why didn't you explain your goal? He shakes his head. I didn't know that I would kill him until I looked into his eyes. Are you satisfied now? It had to be done. I had to restore honor to our company. If you will no longer want my service after this, I understand. I will find my way back to Santo Domingo. Otherwise, I will follow you until you dismiss me. Well... I believe in honor, so he did the right thing. You gotta, you can't let people betray you and walk all over you. It sets a, it sets a pretext for the rest of your dealings. Let's go back to this house. Oh, never mind. That's just the option to attack. Let's look at the market and see what there is. So torches can be bought from several different merchants, and they sell for 250 valuables. Traps are 500 apiece. And we've got enough of that kind of stuff. It's all good. Actually, let's look at the trade here. Because honestly, we've got extra treasure... And we need to shore up our supply of medicine. So I think that'll be good. And then we'll take some extra equipment too. Why not? We're, we're walking around with way too much gold on hand at the time being. So I think we'll be okay. Now that we're done with Papantla, let's grab this treasure over here. And then I'm going to gaze longingly at the map for just a moment. I'm going to make the map very uncomfortable. It's going to blush slightly. It may exhale. I don't know. I'm not so good at my map staring gazing skills anymore. But we're going to try it. So here we go. So in the north, we've got the remains of an ambush. We've also got the Totonac village. Okay. There's Zalapa. We've already been there. There's the cave. Where else can we go here? Let's take a look around. So I know for a fact, I think we hit this place right here. The sunken ruins, maybe? I wish that there was a way that I could right-click things. It would put a little check mark next to them. I did that with Oblivion when I played it. I actually got a map that I printed off off my printer, and I would actually circle and X things out as I finished them off. But I played with a mod that made it so the level scaling was no longer around. So I'd put a question mark there if it wasn't the right level, so forth. I was very empirical about the whole thing. I think what we'll do is we'll just keep... We'll kind of cut west, I guess. If I can keep myself from stammering off here. I'm going to continue making spike traps and maybe another lantern. And then from there... I think we'll be okay, although I should probably start researching axes too pretty shortly. So I'll bear that in mind and we'll see what we can do. But there's nothing contextual, so that all out of the way. We have loads of herbalism to do. And so during the night we get 18 medicines, 2 meats from our hunters, which is not so good. But it's something. And I think the first thing we're going to head for, I'm not going to head down there to the treasure. In fact, I think I'm going to go to the remains of an ambush because I'm feeling a little frosty right now. For those of you that picked up on the fact that I'm starting to play the beat em up Fist Puncher, which is a remarkably just obvious name for the entire game. But what is this? Traveling along the road, you find Totonac merchants accompanied by escorts of warriors and trappers. They respond calmly and politely to you, and you see that their donkeys are laden with large crates brimming with food and valuable trinkets. We will leave them alone. It's not a big deal right now. Let's go ahead and chart the roads, okay? Ooh, even more herbage. So we are well stocked. It is like the Emerald Triangle up here in our bags. Let's take a look and make sure that I'm on the right path here, just to make sure that I don't get wound up ending in a different direction. And it looks like, are we going to make it? Yeah. You're moving along the bottom of a ravine when you come across a chilling sight. You stop to ponder the implications of what you found, and your people gather around you, gazing silently at the sight before you. 
Along the small creek lazily making its way through the ravine are several scattered skeletons, unmistakingly clad in the armor of Spanish soldiers. Scattered Spanish soldier skeletons. I, I like that. That was alliterative. You know what, logic artists? I'm a proponent. Investigate the scene. A remarkable amount of arrows are stuck in the surrounding trees and undergrowth, all at angles that indicate they were fired from the cliffs above. A half-broken light cannon lies abandoned along the riverbed, together with several equine skeletons and their still full saddlebags. It's obvious that if anyone survived this ambush, they must have fled from the area with arrows still raining down from above. The old Spanish pincushion. It's a tactic. Sometimes you gotta leave people behind. It is what it is. Let's go ahead and take a look at the cannon. Your people peel the encrusted mud off the sides of the cannon and drag it out of the river. It appears to miraculously still be in working order. It's more or less just a giant steel tube. I would assume it would take more than arrows to knock it out of commission. A little bit of rust. You could probably clean it up. Just oil it. Just roll all over it with ra like little rags tied to our bodies. And a Vidal lets out a grunt when she sees the engravings along its barrel. Capitan, I've seen these cannon before. This is the falconet that was driven or given to Felipe Gutierrez by His Majesty the King. It was given during a ceremony in Madrid before Gutierrez embarked on this expedition. I'm not surprised. Who other than Gutierrez could have brought a cannon here? Yes, but for Gutierrez to leave this gift behind and not come back for it, he and his men must have been in grave danger indeed. Furthermore, why did his attackers not take it? She nods gravely. Let's examine the arrows real fast. There's nothing particularly suspicious about the arrows in and of themselves. Indeed, they appear to be typical Aztec arrows used mainly for hunting. It does strike you, however, that there are far fewer arrows to be found than you would expect from a scene like this. Looking around for the marks where the arrows may have been stuck and later reclaimed, you are surprised and confused to find holes where arquebus bullets have dug themselves into the trees. Whoever ambushed these soldiers were partially armed with Spanish weapons. Well, let's let's get this cannon up and running. We've received two cannonballs, so our cannon has two balls, as all cannons should have. Your people haul the broken cannon onto one of your carts. You'll have to assign someone to repair it when you make camp. Your people also find a few shots of ammunition and gunpowder for your new weapon. Then you bury the skeletons along with their rusted weapons and armor. You move along the ravine, carefully watching the cliffs above. On the way, you notice heavy footprints preserved in the mud. Could it be anyone survived this ambush? Okay, and so let's take a look at the map and see if it's flagged anything for us. Now, it doesn't appear to have flagged anything of use, but I think... Well, I'd leave it up to you guys, except that it would mean I would cut the episode off here. I don't know if you want to go south and get Gutierrez's treasure. It's marked on the map, so we could run out and get that, or we could go west. I'm a fan of treasure, but all in all, we have most of the things that we need in the game right now. And so, having more treasure, I don't think is going to benefit us very much, actually. Let's see if we can... Ah, sneaky piggy. Clever girl. She was able to outrun us, maybe? Piggy? No, piggy, let me poke you. It's just one little quick poke, and then it'll all be over with. You'll get sleepy for a second, and then you will be bacon, and you will make us all happy. Repair the cannon, Barretto! And so, we got 9 metal that night, 18 medicines, 13 meats, and the cannon is now functioning fine. All without the aid of a forge, which is pretty impressive, to be honest. We're going to leave the pig behind for now. And I think we're just going to cut to the northwest for just a second and see what's lying around the river bend, to quote Pocahontas, somewhat ambiguously. Let's see if we can scale this mountain right here, and it looks like it's going to allow me to do so. I'm interested in what we're going to do with that panther from earlier on in the quest, too. I really have no idea what that panther is for. In fact, I'd like to figure it out, and I think it's going to benefit us in the long run. I mean, if I could have a panther in my party, I would just be absurdly happy. However, I maybe it's not that simple, but that would be... It would be akin to having, like, Boo in your party in Baldur's Gate. Boo and Minsk, although we don't have a crazy berserker, a Germanic berserker... To to carry him around so unfortunately it, we're missing half the crew there but maybe I will be the proverbial minx to the cat's boo and so let's take a look here we're back at the Totonac village let's check in with the Totonac village just in case we've triggered anything because we were aiding their allies and kind of doing some of that general purpose stufferage and so I figure we should probably swing back through. We haven't found ourselves any fights in this episode, which is a little bit of a letdown. I would like to throw down a bit, kind of slice and dice, get a little bit of gunfire going on. The cacophony of war, if you will. The cacophony of conflict. The cacophony of ridiculous battle, if we can get I love the word cacophony. I don't know if you figured that out right now, but I am unleashing a cacophony of cacophonies, or at least a cornucopia of cacophonies, one or the other. We're going to herbalize a tad here. And I apologize, I'm going to jump off that bandwagon now and get back to what we were working on. 
Let's see if the Totanac have anything new for us. I can't guarantee that they will because we haven't gone down and done their crazy little quest yet, but it's worth checking, I think. I think it's worth checking to be redundant in any case. And so coming back to the Totanac village, it looks like... Yeah, they just want us to buy a rope, so I think we'll be all right. All, all told, I don't think we wasted too much time here, so let's get back to the road and we'll head to the west. After we scout out to the west and to the south a little bit, we'll go down further to the south and see if we can help out with the meeting that they wanted us to oversee to make sure that nobody gets kind of ganked, I guess would be the term that I would use, because it definitely seems suspicious. I don't trust the Aztecs for one second. They definitely seem to have ulterior motives, and I'm interested in finding out what they are while at the same time scooping a heaping helping of lovely golden treasure into our bags or our receptacles. I don't know if we have Tupperware or what we have, but in any case, golden Tupperware, the treasure. The treasure we all came to Mexico for. Make sure to burp it first, but in any, oop, what happened today? So 10 meat and we found five metal, which is very cool, but we are carrying around a great deal of stuff right now, so we probably wanna get to work actually processing that into useful goods that can't be destroyed. Let me reference my map one more time. I don't see anything up that way. In fact, I feel as though, let's go up a little bit, just so if we go up this way, we might trigger a hole maybe in here. Okay, it looks like we can go around and snag ourselves a little bit of treasure. There's also some herbage alongside the road, but we're gonna ignore that for now. We're gonna ignore the Chiba and we're gonna keep on rolling. I'm gonna have him tinker a little bit further and actually let's have him just construct to be honest. We have lots of stuff laying around. I feel like we should probably use it. Let's make some barricades because we have tons of stuff laying around and I know we don't have a lot of barricades. When the time comes we need our barely friends to block the advance of our foes. If there's only treasure up here this is kind of a waste of a day. But what am I saying? I'm betraying my own ethics right here. My ethics of gold. And so I don't know why I would ever leave treasure behind or insinuate that it wasn't a waste of time. Living in a treasureless time, I feel as though I should scoop up all the imaginary treasure that I can. But maybe that's distracting me from real life treasure. In any case, like I said before, content or contentedness, if I could speak. My tongue is betraying me. And so what is this right here? A pile of stones. And so if we can- ooh, there's something down here. A fortress. Interesting. So let's go check out the fortress. This might actually be an interesting development. I mean, we're running out of time a little bit. We're, we're pretty far into the episode. I think we're probably all right. And I don't know if that's breaking the fourth wall or if I'm using the term correctly, but in any case, I think we should check this out. It looks like it's been knocked over fairly readily. Let's see. Oh, there's a guard. All right. And so first and foremost, it looks like there are just treasures strewn about everywhere. So let's go ahead and gather these up and maybe we can get ourselves equipped. Treasure chest, stop blocking me from the herb. You are being a bad friend. Only a bad friend gets in the way of the herb. And so, let's see here. The Fortaleza de Gutierrez sits nestled serenely between the river and a rocky ridge surrounded by meticulously cleared woodlands. It's a suitably sturdy building for a fortress, and yet it looks surprisingly idyllic. You catch a glimpse of movement between the buildings of the fort. Let's send a scout. I suppose I'll send Vidal. Vidal sneaks off along the tree line towards the river and out of sight. A few minutes later, she returns unharmed to report. It would appear the fort is being used as a home by a group of tribals. They are using Spanish weapons and armor as decoration. I would not like to imagine how they came to possess such items. Let's not jump to conclusion. We'll make contact first. We'll walk in how and kind of raise our hand. I have no weapon. You and a small group of troops carefully advance upon the fortress with your weapons sheathed. As soon as the guard spots you coming, all the tribals grab their weapons and form up near the gate. The man who must presumably be in charge is at the front observing you with a suspicious look. I am Elgato del Splatter. We harbor no hostile intentions towards you. The chief nods. I am Chipak, leader of Stone House Tribe. How did you come to live in these buildings? The place was built by your people. When they lived here, they ravaged the surrounding villages, subjugating the tribes and taking tribute from us. When they left, we took their stone house. <laughs> I like that's The simplicity of that statement is just beautiful. I love that. On top of... Oh, never mind. He, we can demand that he apologize, or we can ask what happened. I'm going to ask what happened. The last many times we came to pay tribute, we found only five men here. They were the same men, and they looked more distraught with every passing moon. It was clear that the rest of their people had left them behind. The final time we came with tribute, we killed them. This has been our village since. Oh, you murdered people. Well, the chieftain frowns and shifts his weight a little. His grip on his spear tightens. Or, let's see here. We can offer to pay him to give it to us. 
I hope you'll agree that since we built it, it's rightfully ours. We will not give up our home. We paid tribute to your people for many moons, and we defeated them in battle to gain control of the house. We have as much right to it as you. Well, then we're going to fight. And so before the translator finishes the sentence, we told him we'll take it by force. The chieftain has already picked up the tone of your voice. He shouts a command to his warriors, and they look away from you, drawing their weapons. Looks like it will be combat then. And so let's grab our A-team. I don't know who's face and, you know, who's Mr. T and so forth. But we're going to... Oh, hold on. Rita Martinez is trying to sneak into the group again. Rita Martinez. Chastisement. Chastisement and a downturned nose, my lady. And so let's see what this battle has in store from us. Hopefully, or for us, not from us. In any case, I'm willing to bet we're probably going to be outnumbered on this. But, but if we win, we get a fort, which is pretty badass, if I had to say so myself. Let's zoom on out a tad. And it looks like... Five, any more? Six, seven. Okay, I think we're all right. And so I think what we can do here is consider using some barricades because, frankly, we have a lot of them. Additionally, we're going to drop some spike traps here and there and everywhere. There we are. And I just want to be prepared. Honestly, we're not even really using most of this stuff, but we can try anyways. I don't think the lantern's going to favor me here. And so what I think I'll do is set up here to kind of actually we'll set up there to entice someone to come up in our area so that we can bury them oh there's eight enemies I must have miscounted somehow in any case we're gonna set up equal lines along each side and then let me take stock real fast of how many ranged characters they have because I just realized I initiated a load of fighting without counting their ranged it looks like they have quite a bit and this shaky legged lady who we're probably going to end up murdering before the night is through but they kind of took our stuff. I mean, I don't know. Vicariously, they took... I don't know if that's the right word. They took our stuff, sort of. And so we're going to take it on back. Can you afford a shot here? No. Cannot. All right. And so we'll bring the doctor back, and we'll leave him at the back of this little wedge here. And just kind of see what happens. We can throw a lantern. I think I'll do that right there, just to turn this into a bloodbath, if at all possible. We're going to take a really long shot from Ichnoyoidal. This guy's going to run straight through our flames in multiple... Oh, man, he might actually die before he even reaches us. And down he goes. And so the plan went amazingly. It went swimmingly. That's a word I never hear people use, swimmingly. It's a word that's kind of classy, though. It's a, it's it's not necessarily like a $5 word, but it's a word that, I don't know, people might think you're a douche if you use it too much. I don't know. There are certain words that if you just throw them around too much, you're automatically kind of a douche nozzle. But anyways, let's go over here. Actually, I don't know if there's any word like that. I guess it's just using it with the proper tone of voice, maybe. I don't know. I'm not a psychologist. I don't know how this stuff works. We're going to line up on this flank right here, and then the rest of my guys are going to try and bait as best as possible back to this location. We'll take a random... Oh, he has full cover. Well, damn, damn, damn. So I suppose I'll actually pull this guy back over here to break that LOS, just to make it safe. Kind of line up along the walls here. Since most of the melee is more than likely going to happen over here, we'll just kind of keep ourselves along the wall, and hopefully it turns out in our favor. I can't really tell you what the AI is going to do here. Really, he hit us at that range. God. Okay. So we may actually have to... Oh, they can fire through the wall, interestingly enough. Odd. Okay. So let's rethink our strategy a little bit here. I'm going to throw a lantern over the wall in the hopes that I can flush them out a tad. And... Can I throw a dagger at you? It says they've got full cover. Are they actually up higher than us? Interesting. Okay, so we may just have to wait this out and kind of heal as we go, which is not something that I was intensely interested in. I mean, let's see what we can do here. So I guess I'll heal you. And I suppose we'll return fire to the best of our abilities. I mean, I can't guarantee any type of safety from this course of action, but... We'll take some shots, we'll see what happens, and then we will fall back to maybe here? Fire around at him and then fall back again maybe? Oh, we missed. Lovely! Wouldn't it be lovely to quote the classic musical number? And they are just taking some really long shots here. God, okay. Well then, they are managing to land some hits, and so rather than just sit here and get flexed on, I think it may be in my best interest to just advance like crazy. And so what I'll do is, can anybody reach them on this turn? Unfortunately not. So since he's poisoned, what I'll do is I'll have the doc cure him. 
And let's have this gent. God, this could act. Oh, they have spike traps too. No wonder they're not closing on me. God. Okay, so we'll step carefully here. There we go. And unfortunately, since they're not going to advance on me, I'm going to advance on them in the interest of just ending this as quickly as possible since we've already sustained a large amount of losses, unfortunately. I think it's going to be in our overall best interest to start returning fire in some sense. So there's one round off to there. He'll catch some fire next turn. We didn't get a relentless proc. But in the absence of any type of coherent strategy, I guess I'll just start throwing lanterns everywhere. That'll work, right? That always works, lantern spam. It's not something I'm proud of, but... You know, what of my actions in this game am I proud of? Let's go ahead and we'll close as much distance as possible. So that on the next turn, we can reasonably assume that we'll be able to close in on these gents and ladies. There we are, the doctor. I should probably have him fall back a little bit, just for now. And then we'll bring him on to combat. I mean, that may have been a bad move, but I just don't know what to do with him. He's kind of like a sixth toe at the moment. I just don't know what to do with him, so... Looks like we're actually going to have some melee combat here. I've got to remind myself to make sure that in the long run of things, or in the long run of melee, I don't end up accidentally using my ranged weapons in this combat. On the plus side, we're not flanked as of yet, which is always a good thing. And I figure I probably should have brought somebody in here to help out with this. But what we'll do is we'll stun him. We'll go ahead and use a slashy attack there. And we'll also use a slashy attack here. And then in the greater interest of our own survival... Oh, and that's actually kind of a barricade. I have to walk through that. Interesting. And so we're actually kind of cut off from our troops here. In that case, what I'll do... Well, we're going to eat an attack of opportunity if I do that. So let's step him back to here. And we'll step this warrior in so that we're making the absolute best use of everything we can without getting any further attacks of opportunity. We've got a 81% chance to land that shot right there. And so in the next turn or so, he, he'll probably be down. I mean, in the greater scheme of things. Let's move our doctor on up. Hopefully he doesn't step through the flames, keeps himself nice and safe. But we may lose the doctor on this turn. It's okay, though. It's all good in the Aztecian hood, I guess. He's going to take a shot at us. That snake belt, man. Nobody would mess with me ever again if I had a snake belt. In life, there are some things that I need, and a snake belt is one of them. Not a belt made of snake, but a belt that is literally a snake. Like, nobody would ever come around your hip region ever again. It would be the ultimate defense guard. It would be like, it would basically be a chastity belt that no one would dare breach. The snake belt. So my doc made it up here. Let's get him healed up before something terrible happens. And on this turn, we should be able to get some kills taken care of. So we're finally actually going to wheedle down some foes here. And I think we should be able to finish him off, assuming the dice rolls are in our favor, which they decided not to be. And so, maybe the flames will finish him off next turn. There's no way to really tell. Because we used a attack first, we can now attack then move, which is exactly what we're going to go ahead and do. We're going to drag our Lazy Bones warriors out into the field and see if we can close with any of these other individuals who are being a nuisance. That over there is all flames and just craziness and fiery unhappiness at the moment, so I'm not even going to waste my time trying to dance through that mess. And I think I'm okay with this situation right here. Let's go ahead and we'll line him up for next turn behind my ranged guy so that I can cure the poison straight off the bat. And so there's two more damage. In any case, the flames are going to finish him off. He's going to eat an attack of opportunity to take a stab, literally, at this individual. I wonder if that's how that saying came around. Like, it was to take a stab at it. Like, somebody actually stabbed somebody, and they were like, you know what, that would be a great euphemism. I love violence. I love to make euphemisms after violence. Let's use it. And so we've got a flanking attack right here, which is exactly what I'm going to do. And so he's down. And I would love to set up a flank on this side. So let me rotate my camera a tad. It's not even going to be possible. Never mind. We can't get a flank right here. He's got a log behind him. Those pesky, pesky logs. However, we are able to butcher enemies, and so that's going to work out in our favor. Since he's poisoned, I'm going to go ahead and drop the herbage on him. This guy has a really cool hat, by the way. I am intensely jealous of the hats that my hunters get to wear, and that was the wrong key. I always forget how to cancel things. I think you just click them again, maybe? There we go. And so let me reselect a character. An 81% chance. There we go. The dice have favored us. The dice have favored us. I've been playing XCOM, and dice rolls play very heavily into that game. I don't know if you guys had as much like trouble with XCOM as I've been having, but XCOM has been just embarrassing me lately. 
It has been making me look like a joke, and I'm talking about the new one, Enemy Unknown. It has just made me look foolish, just repeatedly. I'm getting a little bit better, but honestly, sometimes you take like... For example, last night I had a battle, which just made me want to cry. Like, I was like, screaming at my monitor, just, no! My dudes missed two 91% sh like, uh, shots in a row, and then two guys got killed because of it, and I was just so ridiculously upset. It was just one of those things where I'm like, why won't you let me win? Please let me win. For the sake of my sanity, please let me win, XCOM. It would be very nice of you. I'll make you my best buddy. But let's move this gent and see if this is actually full cover, if I can fire over this log without problems. I've probably got like a 2% chance for that to work, but hey, it worked out in the end. Talking about XCOM, I read a pretty interesting article by uh, Sid Myers, I think it was, where he was talking about how most people don't apply probability properly. Like, he was talking about they did a study at Firaxis where they talked to people and they were like, okay, well, at what percentage do you feel entitled to a victory? So if I tell you when you're playing poker, for example, that you have a 98% chance of getting two aces, does that make you feel like you should get the two aces? And like, most people are like, yeah, I should get the two aces because there's the 91%. And he said that it came to the point where people felt enormously cheated as though they were entitled to the cards, even though they weren't. And he just said it was weird the psychological impact that percentage displays have on like what people think they deserve. But in any case, we've won the battle, we've drawn it out, and so I think this is a good place to break off the episode. We'll do this last little bit of flavor text because we got ourselves a fort. And so we'll end the event. We got ourselves a forte, a strong place to live. Maybe we can actually like deck it out and do like a fable-esque thing or like a crazy MMO build your house type deal later on but in any case we've run out of time so my name is Splattercat thank you for joining me here in the nerd castle once again it's always a delight to have you all here hanging out with me and playing some video games I hope you'll join me next time and I would urge you all to take care out there because I will be seeing you tomorrow with a fresh episode see you later guys